I don't believe there's a bigger name in the animation industry today than Gendy Tartakovsky. The kind of creator where you hear his name attached to a project and you instantly know this gonna be good. Unless it's Hotel Transylvania, then it's you know this gonna at least look good. It seems bizarre that I've never really talked about him on this channel seeing as I love animation and have been following his creative output for years. Most recently he developed an action cartoon for Adult Swim and Max, ugh, titled Unicorn Warriors Eternal. Before going any further I'd like to offer my sincere apology for this video being so late. Both this and that Gremlin show's first season concluded around the same time. Throw a full time job on top of that and there was absolutely no chance of me getting this out fast enough. So I hope enough people still care about this show a couple weeks later. To quickly summarize the show, Unicorn is a culmination of action, adventure, sci-fi, fantasy, and steampunk that tells the story of a group of magical heroes known as the Order of the Unicorn, who awaken from their slumber when they are called forth to protect the world from evil. A mistake occurs causing them to wake up in bodies that are not their own. This most affects Emma Fairfax who struggles with her new identity as Melinda, the daughter of Merlin, and must choose between her personal life and joining Unicorn to save the world from an approaching evil. All of the characters in this show are both memorable and unique. They're really what makes it for me, playing off of each other well. It's a trope we've all seen before. A gang of misfits must put aside their differences and work together in order to save the world. But I think it's a timeless tale that leaves a lot of room for variety, depending on how you approach each character. The heroes all have their own unique magic abilities, with the exception of Copernicus, their metal robot friend who is very much inspired by TikTok of Oz. He doesn't speak, but it's a lot of fun watching him express himself through toots and whistles. Seng probably has my favorite ability of the group, as he's in a constant state of gazing into the cosmic realm. His head is quite literally always up in the clouds, which results in some fun animations. The whole steampunk aesthetic really gives off some League of Extraordinary Gentlemen vibes. That and there being a team of super people in Victorian London. But that's not the only vibes I'm getting from this show, as this is a rather unique looking cartoon, taking much inspiration from the art styles of early animation pioneers, like Osamu Tezuka and Max Fleischer. I've seen some people online claiming that the Fletcher style is a big middle finger to Sony given the fate of his Popeye project, but I didn't see it that way. I think it's more him utilizing the things that he learned while working on it, finally putting those newfound skills to good use. The animation, done by Studio La Cachette, is incredibly fluent. Everything feels alive and there's plenty of fun, memeable expressions here. I just said memeable. Time to throw in the towel. Supposedly Unicorn is an idea that's been in Gendy's head for quite a long time. It took him 20 years of failed pitches for HBO Max to finally pick it up. We can at least be grateful he got the chance to develop other shows during that time. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves was cited as a big inspiration for the series as well. According to Gendy, it was his goal to create a cartoon that looked what most people would refer to as cartoony, but would still be taken seriously. In an interview with Pace Magazine, Gendy stated, There's a dirty word in animation of being too cartoony. They say you can't feel emotion if it looks too goofy. And that's bullshit. And so that's what I really wanted to do, is have this very cartoony thing, but the emotions are real. And the drama really is a soap opera almost. It's so heightened. If I were to compare this to another show he created, I'd say it's most similar to Symbionic Titan, both of which include action scenes where the visuals do carry it, but not nearly to the extent of something like Samurai Jack or Primal. Is this show as good as Symbionic Titan? That's debatable, but it's hard to compete with Symbionic Titan. A lot of the drama here comes from Emma and the conflict between her, Edred the Elf, and her fiancé, Winston. Edred being upset that the person he once had romantic relations with is inside another body that doesn't feel quite the same way about him. Winston is a fun character due to his immense admiration for Emma. I thought for sure he would abandon her after she transformed into a magical Betty Boot Witch at their wedding, but nope, this dude is loyal. 
Take notes, guy from Monsters vs. Aliens who abandoned his giant wife. Plus, Winston gets to join the crew later in the season in the form of a werewolf, which, I mean, who doesn't love werewolves? I love his goofy, toony expressions as well. They're super cute. Just peak character design, really. We actually have Steven DeStefano to thank for that, who did the character designs for this show. And I think he really did an excellent job here. I enjoyed Unicorn's anything goes sort of approach quite a bit, but there were times when the show could feel a tad convoluted, with important info seemingly coming out of nowhere and being easy to miss. Or maybe I'm just completely out of it lately. I haven't exactly felt alive since I started working full time. There also seems to be a running issue with Gendy's content in the sense that he doesn't know how to conclude a story in a way that doesn't feel wonky. Now this issue could very much be the fault of Derek Bachman, who has been a writing partner with him on a lot of their recent shows, but I'm just gonna meet in the middle and say that it's both their fault, because truth be told, I don't know their writing process. Episode 7, spoilers for episode 7, displays a clear example of this, an episode that ends on a very confusing funeral sequence in which Edward's brother pretends to be dead, when in reality, he has transferred his soul into his brother's old body. This is done as a last minute attempt to sort of write the elves out of the show so that the heroes can continue their journey. None of it is explained until after the fact in some extraordinarily expository dialogue. That was brilliant. Your brother is in your original body and you're still you. But how will you return? I cannot. I was just watching this whole thing play out like... Huh? There are quite a few rather odd, confusing moments in this show, or things that just felt like they should have been a bigger deal, but were simply brushed aside. For me, especially with the last episode of the season. Fortunately, Unicorn makes up for most of its weaknesses with its incredible strengths. Is it the new best Gendy Tarkovsky show? Not while Primal exists. Honestly, this would rank somewhere on the lower end for me. It's above the Hotel Transylvania movies for sure. Which sounds like an insult to those films, but I actually do quite enjoy them. But I don't think I can confidently call Unicorn better than any of his other TV shows. I love it, but it's a bit of a mess. Either way, I'm sure this will end up being someone's favorite, and I am cool with that. It doesn't even matter if it's not the single greatest thing he's ever produced, because it's still a fun time and a cartoon with limitless potential for future seasons. I love that action cartoons are making a comeback. There was a time when Cartoon Network was airing shows like Ben 10, Generator Rex, and Secret Saturdays all around the same time, and that genre of show just disappeared for about a decade. I do think it's a bit of a shame that this got pushed to Adult Swim. In many ways, it's a very good idea. I think adults who watch cartoons are exactly the kind of people this will appeal most to. I just don't know what this decision means for Cartoon Network, a channel which hasn't really been getting many new shows as of late, outside of Cartoonito stuff. I also really don't want this to affect Adult Swim's surreal brand. There really is no other experience quite like that channel. It's free. Real estate. We're giving you land. It's free. We're giving you a house. It's real estate. Free. It's a free house for you, Jim. Either way, I think these are exciting times for animation itself, and I will gladly watch the shows next season. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all again soon in the near future. Goodbye.